Hello there and welcome to Luminar Neo All Sliders Explained, the show where we describe and explain you every single slider in this powerful photo editing application. Now if you've never been here before, my name is Jacob Bors and I'm a creator and founder of Clever Photographer. Now before we're going to start, I have a few things I want to cover. First of all, at the end of the video, we're going to give you our own and very popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet. So stay until the end so you can get your own copy. The second, if you want to follow us along, make sure you head into the description, follow the link there and get your sample files before we're going to start. If you don't own Luminar Neo, you can also follow the link in the description and use our own discount code Clever Photographer. That way you get additional 20% off and you can get your own copy. And finally, we want to ask you to like and comment on our videos and also follow our channel so we can keep creating content like this. In today's video tutorial, we're going to be talking about another powerful AI tool here in Luminar Neo. More specifically, we're going to be looking at the Portrait Bokeh AI tool. Now, when this tool first arrived into Luminar AI, it brought a lot of noise with it. And the reason being that it was very, very trendy. And now we still have it here in Luminar Neo. So let's have a look at it. Now, when you're capturing photos, it is often desirable to place the area behind the subject out of focus. I'm sure you all tried to do that in past. Now, the Japanese word bokeh is used to describe the aesthetic nature of the blur that is produced in these out of focus areas. Now, traditionally, you have to use a high quality lens and a technique involves shooting at the wide open aperture. Now, to simulate this effect without expensive lenses and complicated techniques, Luminar Neo offers the Portrait Bokeh tool. Now, it works on just about any portrait image, regardless of the lens used or the lighting conditions. So that was the idea behind the bokeh effect and now into the practical part. So once again, we are in Luminar Neo and we are in Edit Module. Our focus goes to the portrait section of our toolbar and we will go through each one of the sliders, starting with the amount. Now, when you adjust this slider, the artificial intelligence recognizes people in the frame. It also includes groups or even people in unusual positions and it creates an initial mask that separates them from the background. Then when we push the slider, you will adjust the amount of the blur in the background. So let's give it a go. At the moment, there is no mask, there is nothing. So let's just push the slider a little bit. Now, as you can see, it takes a moment and really it depends on the size of the image and how many people. And as soon as the mask is ready, all the rest of the sliders become available. Also, what happens now when I move the mouse on the actual picture, two things happen. First of all, you can see that the mask become red, as you can see it on the image right here. And also our mouse turn to the brush tool. And why is that? I'm going to show you in a second. So we're going to move to the next section, which is called brush control. In most cases, the initial mask created by the amount slider is ready to use. If you want to refine the initial mask, use these brush controls. This can be useful to refine complex masks. For example, adding an object held in your portrait subject hands. Now, how does it actually work? It works very similarly to the masking tool in Luminar Neo. And, and if you need to remind yourself how it works, you can check out the video we have and it should be right now in a corner of your screen. So let's go back to the actual image with our mouse. And once again, as you can see, the subject turned red. So the idea is that everything that is red is in focus and everything that is not red is out of focus and it receives the bokeh effect. Now, as I don't want to make this any more complicated than it has to be, let me just practically show you how this works. In the brush control, we have three different options, focus, defocus and restore. So coming back to the fact that our mask is in red by painting while being on the focus, we're going to add more red areas, more areas with the focus. So I can just paint right here. So that area would be in focus. Then we have the option of defocus. So you already guessed by switching to that and painting over an area, I can actually remove the area where the focus is. So I can also paint over the original mask and so on. 
And finally, we have the restore option. And this is quite handy, as it actually allows us to restore the original mask created by the AI tool. So looking at the image right now, you can see that I removed part of the original mask together with the brush stroke I created earlier. And because I'm on restore, I can now just brush over the head and it will restore the original mask automatically. So it's quite handy. That way you don't have to run the tool once again from the beginning. You don't have to reset everything. You can just use the restore option and go ahead and restore your original mask. Now the rest of it works very similarly to the brush tool as I mentioned already. You can adjust the size of the brush, you can adjust the softness of the brush and you can adjust the strength of the brush. So now we understand the idea of the bokeh effect and also the part of the masking and the use of the brush. So now we can move to the final section of this tool called background. If for some reason you don't see it, all you need to do is to click on this little arrow and it will open up for you. So here we have another five sliders and we're going to cover them now, starting with the brightness right here. So this slider controls the overall exposure of the background. You can lighten or darken the background to further offset the subject. I'm sure it's really simple. So you push it towards the right and you brighten the background or you push it towards the left and you darken the background. Now, two more reminders here. How do you reset the sliders? Simply by double clicking on their name and they reset to zero or their default value. Also, when we trying these sliders, really make sure that you push them all the way to see the difference. It's really no point to push them to two, three and not understanding what they do. So in another case, brightness is clear. Moving to the next slider, highlights glow. The highlights glow adjust the brightness of the brightest area of the background adding a soft glow to it. So let's try it. Right now it's on zero. And when we push it all the way, you can see the brighter area become much more brighter and they're getting a little bit of the glow in them. Again, to reset the slider, double click on its name. The next slider is the warmth. So as you guessed it, you can adjust the warmth of the background. You can make it warmer by going towards the right, or you can make it cooler by going towards left. Again, reset it by double clicking on the name. And then we have two more sliders here, the depth correction. Now this controls where the out of focus area begins in the photo. Moving this slider to the left, set it closer to the camera, moving it towards the right, move it further away. As a result, the bokeh effect appears stronger or weaker. So let's give it a go. When we go towards the right, you can see it's kind of getting back to what it was originally. And when we shift it the other way around, it's getting much more softer and blurrier. Again, we reset it. And finally, we have the edges correction here. Now this slider is used to expand or contract the soft edges of the mask. It's useful for adjusting the fine details in a mask like a hair. Now for us to be able to see this slider, we need to zoom in to at least 100% and then navigate towards the hair. Then we can come back to our slider and when we push it all the way towards the right, the mask actually contracts, it gets smaller and when we push it the other way around, it expands. Now it, it is a fine adjustment, but I still think it's good for you to know that it's here. So now you know all the different sliders, all the different options here. So it's time to jump into the catalog and work on some other images. So while we are here in catalog, it's a good time to remind you that you can follow us along by going into the description, following the link there, and that will bring you to our Dropbox account. From there, you can download the additional images and do the editing on your own computer. Now, as you can see here, we have multiple different images, different subjects. And what we're going to try to do is to apply this tool to different images and see how well the Luminar Neo is going to do. So let's start first of all by using this image as we already had a single person. So now let's try it on a couple. So from here, we're going to go into the edit module and come back to our portrait bokeh AI. We will bring it all up so we can see it nicely. And now, as always, the first thing you need to do is to bring the slider up. Once the mask is applied, all the sliders become available. And when we move our mouse over the actual people, you can see the mask is all ready. 
And I have to say that I'm really impressed by the result. I think it's really, really cool. The selection is very, very nice. And now when we shift the slider, you can see how the background is getting nice and blurry. From here, we can move into the background and we can adjust the brightness. We can make it darker or we make, can make it even brighter. So I think brighter works very well. We could also add a little bit of highlights glow and make it all very pretty. Now, bringing the mouse back, I can see that there are certain parts down there which maybe need a little bit of adjusting. So let's zoom in and then navigate towards that. And it's a little bit of um, masking around the shoes. And we can simply fix that by going into our brush control. And what we need to do is to actually remove some of the focused area. So we will click on defocus. We will adjust the size of our brush leave the softness, leave the strength, and just brush away these parts which are not part of their bodies or part of the area we want to keep in focus. So we can do something like this. We can make the brush even smaller and really take our time adjusting the areas to what we like. Once we have with that, we can just go back to fit to our screen and just leave it. If you want, you can do further corrections in the background. However, I'm quite happy with the result and I'm actually really impressed by the automatic mask. So this was an image with two people, but how about the whole family? So next image is this one right here. Moving back to edit module, same idea, portrait bokeh and push the slider. So once again, once everything become available, it should take a moment and the mask should be ready. So let's push the amount. And I can see some parts are getting blurry. So let's have a look at the mask. And I mean, once again, look at that. I think it's really, really cool. It's incredible how powerful this mask tool is. Again, of course, there are parts which maybe need a little bit of adjustment, especially the shoe here and also a little bit here. So let's fix that. Again, we're going to zoom in this time, maybe to 200%. And by using a space bar, we can just navigate towards the shoes. Once again, this time we don't want to remove the part of the selection, but we want to add. So we will keep our brush control on focus, adjust the size to make it a little bit smaller, and we can just brush over the little boy's shoe. By using a space bar, we can move around and see if there are some other areas, maybe over his toy here. And the rest of it actually looks really, really cool. So just looking around seeing if everything works out. There's a little bit of here, something to do with the jeans. Now you can switch on and off the mask by using your keyboard. And I think the result like this is really good. So let's zoom out again by using the fit screen and zoom out. So what we can do, we can push the amount to really blur the background. I think in this case, I would make the background even darker by using the brightness slider. I'm not too worried about the highlights glow, but I would maybe make it a little cooler to bring a little bit more contrast into it. And the depth correction, do we want to make it even more blurry? I don't think so. I think it works very, very well. So let's go back to the catalog and let's talk about this. We know that it works very well on single person. It did a great job on a couple. And once again, it did a great job on multiple people. So my next question is, is this tool going to work on an animal? So for that, we have a three different pictures with the dogs here. So let's give it a go. First of all, simple dog. Let's jump into the edit module. And once again, portrait bokeh. And the slider is available, so it should be working. So let's give it a go. We push it a little bit. Once again, wait a moment. And it did apply a little bit of mask to it. However, it didn't do greatest job here. But, but being able to apply the effect, now, if you would really want to, you could jump in with the brush and do the selection by yourself. Now we can zoom in and try to do that by brushing over these areas with your brush and taking as much time as you want. So I think the good news is that the tool works. Okay, it didn't do a great job with the mask, but you could fix that by using the focus, defocus and restore. So that's a good news. Let's give it a go and let's try another image. Going back to the catalog and this time trying this dog right here. It should be a similar idea. I mean, they almost have the same posture, same space around them. So let's go into the edit module and again, portrait bokeh. And this time, no matter how long you wait, the tool actually doesn't become available. 
Um, I was looking at it, I was wondering why, but at the end, I guess maybe it's because of the flower or because of the contrast of the colors, but for some reason, for this picture, the tool is not available. So then once I edit those two images, I was wondering how is it gonna work when there's gonna be person and animal? So the dog and a little human. So we click on this image, bring it back to edit, and let's have a look at it. So portrait bokeh, and the slider is available. So let's push it, give it a moment, and let's see how the mask look. And look at that, the mask is actually really cool. Although the baby is completely away, you can't see the face, you can't see anything, I think the mask is quite impressive. Yes, it needs a little bit of fixing on this side, but it's nothing major. Compared to the first dog, I think this result is really good. So we can zoom in, use the spacebar to move around, and now really simply, just adjusting the size of our brush, we can just add this part to the mask, and that's it. Nothing complicated and very powerful. So we can zoom out, and now we can push the amount, and we can really blur the back. Of course, we can jump in, maybe increase the brightness, add some highlights glow, because that would look very cool. And the result is really cool. So what it tells you, when it comes to animals, you really need to give it a try and see the result and see if it's gonna work or not. Three different images. This one did a great job. This one, not so much, but it worked. And on this one, it didn't work at all. And now the, my final question is, is it going to work on other elements like food or cars or something like that? So let's try, first of all, this car image right here. Let's go back into the edit module and portrait bokeh. And now looking at it, the amount slider doesn't even become available, so it's not going to work. Now I know this is all portrait and for people, however, I thought it was worth to give it a go. So going back to the catalog, we probably already know the answer for the food, but still, let's try it. Going back to the edit module, portrait bokeh, and once again, it's not even available. So there we are, back with our original image. We tried the portrait bokeh AI on multiple different subjects, and we know that it's actually very smart when it comes to human. So let's run through the tool once again. Using the amount, you can adjust the amount of bokeh applied to your image. Then we have the whole section of the brush, which is really handy when you want to adjust the mask created by the AI tool. And then we have the whole control for the background where you can adjust the brightness. You can add some lovely highlights glow. You can also adjust the warmth of the background. And then you can play around with the depth correction and edges correction. So now it's time to get your own Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet. All you have to do is to head to our website, cleverphotographer.com slash luminargift and get it right now. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you had a fun and I hope you learned something new. Please don't forget to follow our channel and also check out our other videos covering Luminar Neo. For today, thank you very much for watching. My name is Jacob Bors and I can't wait to see you in the next one.